And last part uh, of this lecture too is to think about actors and how to use scenarios. Because scenarios as manuscripts of the future, they contain narratives. These narratives should contain uh, actors. In order to make narratives vivid, they should also include drama, dramatic stories. There should be actors involved, because through these actors, narratives can be made vivid. So actually, this is a very um, interesting aspect that we try, when we try to monitor and anticipate change in society in future studies. This kind of identification of change may happen through identifying change-making actors, looking at actors, what they can do and what they are doing. And besides looking at all actors, we can have a look at forerunning actors, which are called pioneers. That's also interesting, and in company life, innovate, innovation is very often achieved through pioneers. So it's also a method pioneer analysis in the method book by the Finnish Society for Future Studies, where this kind of pioneer identification can happen. Stanford Research Institute has made a model of scenario development where we use this kind of horizon scanning, where we look at driving forces, we look at uncertainty and uh, possible impact factors, then we make scenarios, use the logic, but now the usability is focused on decision making. What kind of decisions are to be made based on scenario work. This is very challenging. How to use the material from scenarios and how to make the company decisions. It's another process as itself. Ramirez and Wilkinson have said that making scenarios, reading them, using them for policy making, is as a whole a learning process. They serve their purpose if they lead into action. So all the scenario work, it may be interesting and the results may be interesting, but they should be used, they should be applied, they should uh, support decision making, they should lead into action. Gore, uh, Ted Gordon and Jerome Glenn from the Millennium Project have said that the best scenarios describe plausible means for improvement as well as means for eliminating roadblocks to a desirable future by providing better understanding of future risks and uncertainties. Again, this um, emphasis on, uh, on the use and applicability of scenarios can they be used to improve company strategy and can they be used in order to identify which kind of hindrances there are that we should eliminate and uh, embedded risks as well. So plausibility and usability actually are, are critical aspects of scenario processes. So the measure or criteria of a good scenario is not its accuracy, because they are not predictions. But uh, the measure of a good scenario is plausibility and usability. Telling the story about getting from here to there, internal self-consistency logics, as well as usefulness in decision making desirability and usability of scenarios may vary hugely according to the stakeholders interests and views. I mentioned that many stakeholders should be involved when making scenarios, but uh, it is directly related to the question, and this is also ethical question and value question, whose futures are we thinking about when we are making uh, scenarios in a company. Whose scenarios 
are most dominant or because every future studies process and work has an impact. So it is not irrelevant to think about whose futures are we thinking and uh, whose scenarios are we using in our own company strategies. Thank you very much. Again, reading literature is included in the slides.